Music is life. Sometimes, frankly, he's just a pain in the ass. He can be quite a pain in the ass, though. Well, yeah, you can be a pain in the ass sometimes. Yeah, Doug can be a real pain in the ass. He can be a real pain in the ass. <laughs> He is a very unique artist, in a, in, a, in a very good way. The music really, really speaks to me. It's, it's very different. It's very unique. You wouldn't expect some of these chords and these notes. You got like what I call rubs happening. You know, it's like the tonic is an E, and then you got like an F on top of it, like this. Come up with something uh, that challenges. Even to this day, in the 21st century, the "it's all been done before" mantra. The reason that I believe so strongly in music, let alone the music that I try to contribute to the, to the pile and the path forward from here, is that I truly believe that music saves lives. I don't really care Through a fluke, I ended up not quitting piano. I came extremely close to just being completely done with life by the time I was 11 years old. Doug's history is actually uh, pretty crazy. He comes from a, uh, he definitely comes from a miserable sort of place and you can hear that in his uh, music, especially on the second album. Um, he's a strange character that's been through a lot of stuff and uh, it's pretty amazing that uh, he's still able to do this. On the piano I could come up with my own things. Uh, learn other things that I was influenced by, that was a big eye-opener. I mean, I can play a Queen song on the piano at age 11, 12. This was a life-changing thing for me. Doug and I always, always go back to Queen. Uh, we love Queen. I wanted to try to, again, not, not be or emulate uh, exactly what something that came before me was, but rather to actually pick up where uh, musically some of these things had left off and to try to push the ball forward a little bit. He really stretches out and goes uh, places where no, some people have not gone before. The minor major seven chord is gonna save the universe. Doug's a very unique songwriter because he's going to take um, his ideas of passion and make that the, the prime motivating force. I'm not trying to create something that is 100% you've never heard before, but it doesn't follow the, the traditional verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, chorus, structure of, of a song. Things remain very, very interesting. In a way that combines in a way that maybe you've never heard this combination of influences come together before. But he's gonna do it by being both original and yet very accessible. A lot of, it's a lot of the things that, that make him very difficult to work with are also the things I appreciate about him. He doesn't, he doesn't settle. Joe has been with me from the beginning. And what's very unique about Joe is that it was one of those rare cases where he just gets it. From day one, he understood what the mission is, what the vision is, he shared it, and he wanted to see the same thing happen to music uh, in the best of ways. And so I had somebody who not only was a musical soulmate, but somebody who very quickly became you know, one of my best friends in life as well. Gary Workamp, um, in my opinion, one of the greatest guitarists um, that I'm aware of, uh, certainly. I'm happy that Doug trusts me enough to kind of take an idea and run with it. And sometimes I'd uh, you know, spend 30, 40 minutes on something that I'd play three or four notes to. And if I could have anyone I want, even some of the greats who are completely, theoretically, inaccessible uh, to get to play with you and work with you, I still choose Gary Workamp. I would get started recording and the phone would ring. Did you do the harmony? Oh, don't forget, it's gotta be the best guitar solo ever written. And then sometimes I'd say like, okay. Chris, well, Chris is uh, the new guy. 
uh, to the band. And being the new guy, that was really the most challenging part, is getting really those complex songs and being right together and um, us becoming a band. And once we got greener grass, it seems like a lot of more puzzle pieces uh, came together. Greener grass has a lot of pieces, a lot of things going into it. You know, that was my vision from the get-go with the first album, is to make music that killed all birds with one stone. And this greener grass, if anything, it's almost like a sequel to that. It's like a sequel to It Happens. We went through some different styles on this. The concept of the whole thing is that the grass is, in fact, not greener on the other side. Once you make it to the other side, you realize you're still yourself and everything still sucks. When we caught up with Rich Mauser, who was kind enough to give us some of his time and talk about his role with this, um, he really, really caught me off guard by acknowledging that the end was his favorite piece. I like the end. Wow. The name of the song, which I know is your most weird. It's kind of Pink Floyd, though. I think of it almost as a painting. It's experimenting in a lot of ways with a lot of different things. There's a big ode to the major seven sharp five, the young men in major seven. Um, this album owes a lot to that chord. Your lyrics are very dark. They are, they are very, very dark. dark. The lyrics are deep and dark, but there's a reason. I think music is life and music should be an honest expression of what your life is and what you go through. A lot of dark things on this album and um, it's just a really, uh, really good outlet to get some of these emotions out. I am going to go ahead and take Greener Grass as well as a song called Irked. This song irked, it really, really uh, exercises some demons when it comes to, uh, you know, the frustrations of trying to balance and juggle and fight against um, work life, when you have a work life. All you care about is pain. And so I simply had to acknowledge this other side, um, you know, that was kind of eating at me a lot of the time and uh, getting in the way. Uh, I'm the last person in the world that dusts things under the carpet and so this song came out of me and it said that it had to exist and be there with all the others. Little did I know this song would become one of my actual personal favorites. Well, you're not an you know you're not an asshole. Oh, thank you. But you know what it is? You're just you're, you're just an artist that um, you're just particular. Uh, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me to be part of part of a band like this where we can really express ourselves and, and let out our emotions in different ways. And it feels like, you know, with the rhythm section, me and Joe, uh, we really have a good chemistry and I think that's what made me feel a lot more comfortable in the band, having that chemistry between me and him and then eventually um, me and uh, Doug got on it and it's just sounding awesome. When you hear the final product, you start to understand why why he cares so much. You know, his intent and desire in his heart, it's, it's, it's great. And um, he's a, a very unique individual, that's for sure. I am not an asshole, not an asshole, not an asshole, not.